Now, what are so so what makes a character interesting to an audience? Is it just this this drive, or is what 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 are some elements that make characters interesting? Great question. One of the reasons is the particular desire that they have, mm -hmm. because. When a, when a character has a very specific goal, especially if it's a difficult goal to achieve, that's one of the ways the audience identifies with that character because if that character wants the goal that much, and I know precisely what goal they want, then I want them to win that goal too. So I get invested in it as well. I, when, I, when I get my story class, I talk about the desire line is, is the tracks of the train and when, once we set up that goal at the end of the journey, it's like the audience gets on the train with the hero, and we all go after it together. So you, so you can, you're, you're absolutely right. You can't, you know, you could, you can cut anything into as many parts as you want, but at the end of the day, it's all about the story, and it's all about how it's moving that that drive through it. Exactly. Exactly. It's all about how are how are the all the elements contributing to the overall narrative drive of that story? Because the audience isn't looking at it and say, "Well, that was a great first act." Right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> He's good. This guy's good. Yeah. No, only in L only in L.A. <laughs> right in L.A. <laughs> but but no, they're sitting there. They're on this real ride. They want the propulsion. They want the speed. Right. And so they don't know the techniques that are going there. They don't know the techniques that are putting them there. But we as writers have got to know those techniques. So like, we create it. So like thinking about a screenwriter like Chris Nolan, who yeah. is obviously a master at what he does in, in his storytelling craft. You take a script like Memento or Inception, which has it's just layer on top. of yeah. It makes my head hurt. Right. Thinking about the layers that are on that and how he's able to. Bring, yeah. or, or Pulp Fiction. I mean, that's another one that was just... This, yep. You could break that into three-act structure. Without, you could. You but, could. But well, what would it do for you? What <laughs> would it do for you? I, I I prefer to break it into the elements that really made a difference. Which are? So, so for example, I, I love the fact that, you, that you're talking about Chris Nolan. Mm -hmm. Chris Nolan and his brother are yes. the number one in terms of the ability to create plot in popular movie today. Mm -hmm. Number one, they are plot masters. And their biggest problem that no one else in the world has is they're so good at plot that they create too much plot sometimes. <laughs> they do sometimes. <laughs> they sometimes do, yes. right? They sometimes do. But what I always tell writers is we should all have that problem. Right. It's like, right? I don't want to get too big if I go to the gym. Right, I don't right. want to get too exactly. shredded. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, I, I say if when when you can write plot like Chris Nolan, then come to me and, and we'll 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 give you a few things that that'll that'll so fix it. They'll right? tone, they'll I, tone it down. Gonna, I don't think you're gonna be coming to me. I really don't. <laughs> but but no, I mean you you look at the way that he structures these stories and the way he uses plot. Mm -hmm. Um there you, you you can see if you break it down you can see the grand strategy that the author and the main opponent are using. Let me give you a perfect example of this. In The Dark Knight, yeah. greatest superhero movie ever made. I would agree with you on that. And there is no, com there is no competition for that. It is the best. If you look at the plot of that story, mm -hmm. it is... It is it's, it's, it, it's, it's deep. It's, it's very deep. It's very complicated. Yes. And yet probably a little too complicated, but I'm fine with that. Yeah. But 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 if you if you break it down structurally, you will find that this plot is built on a sequence of tests, moral tests, that the Joker forces Batman to solve. And these tests become more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. 
Intense, yeah. Intense. Leading to the final test with where we have the two ships, mm -hmm. where he used the classic, from game theory, the classic prisoner's dilemma in order to create this scene. And, what, and, and why is the Joker forcing Batman through these tests? Besides the fact that the greatest opponent will test the hero to the deepest possible level. It's because he's trying to prove his view of humanity. 